Previously on The Joe Schmo Show, our unsuspecting hero, Matt Kennedy Gould, moved into the mansion and got to know our fake contestants. <laughs> Kip gave advice about his scrapbook. If someone takes pictures, only take positivity. That's the only kind of memories I want to preserve in this book. <laughs> Matt flirted with Ashley. We gotta get going. I mean, if we're gonna use the hot tub. No. <laughs> Okay, we gotta go. The actor playing Earl almost ruined the show. Wait, which ones did you think were mine? The, uh... You had the, you had the blue one with the big fish in the front. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it the, the first day within the first two hours. After sharing a bed with Dr. Pat and Earl... Ready, set, touch that hooker! Matt shocked us all on the first immunity game. I have to say, sharing that bed is ridiculous. And I won't do it another night. <gasps> And Matt became Kip's backbone. I'm gonna break hey, you. I, I will ride you hey, to Kip. hell. I'm the devil, dude. Kip, Kip don't even it. respond. He warned Hutch the asshole. Dude, you're pissing people off. Don't be a jerk. What are you talking about? You're a slut. Ah, ah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. His alliance with Gina came crashing down in the first eviction ceremony. Gina, you're dead to us. And Matt was glad she was evicted. She voted for me, bro. She grieved me. But, Brian, I guess I made a bad judge of character. What would you do if your entire world turned out to be fake? If an army of writers, producers, and actors spent over a year creating TV's most elaborate experiment around you? If they plotted your every move, recorded it 24 hours a day, and put it on national television? Well, that's exactly what happened to this guy. Meet Matt Kennedy Gould, one real guy competing for $100,000 on a reality show that he doesn't know is fake. Starring nine actors. Melissa Yvonne Lewis as Ashley, the rich bitch. David Hornsby as Hutch, the asshole. Angela Dodson as Molly, the virgin. Franklin Jones as Earl, the veteran. Nikki Davis as Gina, the schemer. Lance Crawl as Kip, the gay guy. Brian Keith Etheridge as Brian, the buddy. Kristen Wiig as Dr. Pat, the quack. And me, Ralph Garman, as the smarmy host. All performing for the one guy who thinks it's real. This place is fucking starting to drive me crazy. This is The Joe Schmo Show. Now, with Matt locked away in his bedroom, sharing his thoughts in his daily interview, the cast secretly sneaks away and meets with the director to plot out the day. Everybody here has was excellent. The key thing for this morning is getting us back to real. Kip Hutch antagonism is working really well. Molly, today's your day to probably just grab him for a little one-on-one. -on -one. Ashley, I think this would be a good opportunity for you to turn the bitch dial up one. Kip, you are going to go up to your room and show everybody all the good work you've done on your, on your book. Battle with Sexes, basically it's going to be Earl, the closest to the host, and then it's going to be Brian, and then it's going to be our boy Matt. Kip is our ringer for the girls' team. He's yeah. never going to miss one. Minute. We have come so far, but this series is like a grenade. It just has one pin. We got to a very outrageous place last night. It was great, but we got a little toward the edge, and we got a little spooked. Let's dial it back and get real this morning. That's my final note. You guys are doing awesome. I cannot wait to see what happens today. I'm glad that you might have the impression on me, because you're... What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I had a dream that my mom came to the lab of luxury, and I just remember kind of her coming in and me being like, Ma, hey, what's up? Then I realized this is the longest I've ever gone in my life without talking to anyone in my family, and I miss them. Dude, I'm just, uh, I'm not in the mood for a chicken breast, man. I want a sandwich. Look, look. Ready? Oh, no. <laughs> no one is taking pictures with this yet, so please, you know, feel free. I don't want to be the only one taking the pictures, okay? Kip decided to give us an update on how his Creature Comfort, the photo album, is progressing. You guys want to see this, what I got Yo, so far? Yes. Pass it around. Yes, it's really fun. That's a funny picture. I got your panties in a lot, Dr. Pat. <laughs> when I lived in Texas, I was in Beaumont, which is an hour and a half from Houston. I dated a girl in Beaumont once. My parents live in Houston. All my grandparents and everything is in Beaumont. Molly was talking with Matt about her parents and where they live, and she started to mix her story up. Are you guys from similar places in Texas? Yeah, dude, we're right near each other. Well, six years ago. 
Oh, yeah. When I live you should have barbecue. Uh, why do, wait, have why barbecue do you live in Wisconsin? Here. I guess she had told Matt that her parents really don't live in Texas. They live in Wisconsin. So Matt was like, well, so why do you live in Wisconsin? Oh, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin. Why don't we have a barbecue? Excuse me. I'm like, oh my God, I just blew the show. It's over. I'm fired. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the one of the best grills on the market is sitting right there. <sighs> it's built into the wall. You okay? Mm. What's wrong? I just bit my tongue. Oh. Oh, God. You okay? I bit it hard. Oh, my God. I'm, ugh. She has a pretty big tongue. She does? Yeah. Matt looked a little weird, and so I, I turned to him and I go, well, she has a really big tongue. <laughs> Why that came out of my mouth, I have no idea, but it did. Hopefully that, that covered, I don't know if it helped or not. Like, three or four times, He's giving me these looks, like he's not believing something that I'm saying. It's making me really nervous. Yeah. Oh my goodness. When he pulled me aside, I knew what he was gonna talk to me about. I just knew, and I'm like, I'm really, really nervous. His, his voice was kind of cracking, and you could tell he had like a lump in his throat or something. I'm a little nervous, so that's why my voice is cracking. It's okay. I told Gina I wouldn't vote for her, and I wanted to. It's okay, it's okay, thank God. You know, after what she did, and I thought she was playing me. After making my pact with Gina, and kind of having that blow up on my face, I decided that I was going to be honest with everyone. When I went back to the thing, I just randomly picked a name, and I picked yours, and I wrote it down. I knew that you weren't gonna get voted off, because I knew Gina was gone. Right. But I wrote your name down, and I just wanted to tell you this because I, was wondering who you I didn't know. want you to look over your shoulder like, you know, and game or no game, like, I like you. And I didn't put your name down there because I want you gone. And you want to know how you can make it up to me? How? Don't vote for me next eviction ceremony. Okay. And you can promise me that? Oh, listen. Thank you, I've said it. I will not vote for you, and I promise you that. Okay? Thank you. So, okay. <laughs> Thanks for understanding. It's not a big deal, darling, I'm telling you. It took everything I had not to just like jump in his lap and hug him and pet his head and say, it's okay, it's okay. The plan for the first game was for the guys' team to lose. This was crucial for our next storyline to unfold. Hey everybody. Today, you're gonna to be playing for some pampering outside of the house, okay? In order to win this coveted prize, all you have to do is come out as the victor of the Battle of the Sexes. All right, now what we've done is we've split you into teams right down the gender line. Kip has agreed to play for the other team. I agreed for that a long time ago. I will be asking you questions based on a sexual questionnaire we had you fill out earlier. Battle of the Sexes was a game that um, in a way, I was kind of most nervous about because we all had to kind of memorize what our answers would be for these ridiculous questions about one another. The first team that loses four questions loses the game. Four wrong questions, you lose the game. Got it? Got it. Hex the winners will go off and get their pampering outside the walls of the mansion. The losers, however, must spend the rest of the afternoon cleaning the mansion in your penalty outfits. Hex on you, hex on you. The first question goes to the fellas early. This person lost their virginity in a mall bathroom. Wow. Is it Dr. Pat, no. Molly, no. Ashley, no. or Kip? No, no, no. Earl, what do you got? What do you got for me? I think we're gonna go with uh, Kip. No, I'm sorry, it's Ashley. What? You gotta be kidding. Well, Earl, unfortunately, that means you're incorrect. You have to step behind the screen and put on your penalty outfit now. Come on out and show everyone the penalty outfit. Little Bo Peep. Yes! We're gonna ask her to do a little pole dance using her staff for everyone, okay? <laughs> Knock yourself out, little Bo Peep. I don't even dance regular dance, let alone a pole dance in a little Bo Peep outfit, man. Fellas, as you can oh see, God. Again, oh. someone is Molly, uh, upon us. Molly's a cop. Here's a perp but she's got some drugs on her. We don't know where they are. What? 
up. So Molly has to frisk the suspect until you find the drugs. You understand, Molly? I have to what? You have to frisk this suspect until you find drugs. <laughs> Find those drugs, they could be anywhere. Because we all know each other and we know that you're putting these people through these paces and I was the one in control of how long they had to do it and what they had to do, I was really fucking with people today. Hey, Molly, Molly, no, Molly, Molly, they're not Molly, there. Molly, no, they're not no. The they're, they're, she's not hiding them under her arm. You gotta keep going until she find you find them. Out of here. What? It's not as bad as it sounds. It was for church. We did a video for the younger kids, and I was basically the girl that was kidnapped, and I was tied up in a trunk. <laughs> That's not bondage. That was a good trick. We got hosed. You think you got hosed there? Wait till we put you in the penalty outfit. Go ahead, Mac. I went back behind and realized that I would be dressing up as a, yeah, a young schoolgirl. No. Oh. Matt has been a very naughty schoolgirl, and Matt needs to be punished. No. Matt's a schoolgirl, he must have flunked a and lot so of Brian classes. so Brian will administer that spanking oh, no. that Matt so desperately no. needs. Oh my god, very naughty. Oh, I like it! Pain like doesn't equal it. pleasure for me, uh, especially not with Brian as the spanker. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, that's good Woo! enough. Nice job, guys, take your seats. Oh, man! No. You Ladies, the next question goes to you. This person wouldn't mind a little dirty talk with Oprah. Not it would just be weird as well, but I'm saying Earl it would probably just be weird enough Oprah. to be the hutch. I agree. Oprah. Turn it around. Oprah. It's all for you, Oprah. <laughs> That's all for you, Oprah. <laughs> well, your ass is a little red from that spanking, yeah. man. Oh, look, it's oh, Farmer Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> Farmer girl. Well, it's Farmer Ashley. <laughs> And guess what? It's peach picking time. The peaches are ripe and you need to pick them off the tree. I figured if I could put it into her cleavage, then at least she would get something else. So I just tried to keep it interesting for myself and for them, mix it up a little bit and have some fun with it. Let's see. Oh. Pick it, pick it. Oh, pick oh it. yeah. Oh, well oh. done. Oh. Whoa. That was Whoa. pretty impressive. I, Thanks so much. Oh, Thanks so much. That was great. Your mouth is huge. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Leave it Thanks in there so for much. a minute. <laughs> Thanks so much. Leave it in there for a minute. Question goes to you guys. Hutch, you're the spokesperson. You ready? This person was reprimanded by her college sorority for sexual harassment. My gut. Hutch's gut. Ashley. I bet all my money on that. It was Dr. Pat. Hutch! You know what it means. Penalty outfit, buddy. Well, Hutch is a nice guy, but you know we know he's dirty and sick, and so he looked like a dirty, sick French maid. Well, Hutch just got his job as a French maid. In order to really prove himself, he has to perform a foot massage on his new employer. The ladies have chosen Earl to be your new employer, Hutch. So maybe you want to get down there on one knee. Why don't you? Uh... Besides jungle rot out of the. Uh fungus and bacterial infection. They bleed and they crack and, and they, they scale and they get hard and they're ugly. That is disgusting. Get down on, get down on this knee and uh, give Earl a foot massage. And of course, honestly I'll let you know when I'm sick. satisfied that it's completely gagging. I'm trying to, you know, be in the game and look and make fun, but at the same time, like, <laughs> like the entire time, but I'm laughing because it's funny on one hand, but then it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Is that a nail or an artifact, man? That thing is like ancient. They're like white and crusty and the nails are like yellow and thick and it was bad news down there. We're gonna give you a little massage all the work with, okay? Because that would just be too hard to do that dry. Is so the only disgusting. Thing I can tell you. To add insult to injury pulls out the oil. Like, dude, to really Oh Jesus. To really get the juices flowing, that's what you need. Hot oil on jungle rot, okay? It worked those It's feet. a boat. Oh, for God, God stop it. it. For the love of God. <laughs> no. I'll clean the fucking house. Please don't make me do this. Like, I don't know if the audience knows, but all of that was just... Um, unscripted. I mean, I didn't know I'd be rubbing Earl's feet, so that's like true laughter. All right, fellas, here's the bad news. They only have two strikes against them. You have three. Woo! Brian, you're the spokesperson because you're the only person without a penalty outfit on at this point, okay? We have to get this. And here's your question. 
One of the ladies over here had an orgasm during a pap smear. I'm just going to voice that I think it's Dr. Pat again, but you're the spokesman. On every single one who thought it was me. I don't know what makes you think that I'm like a crazy sex lady. <laughs> Molly, 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 Molly. We all say Molly. Which one of you said Dr. Pat again? Yeah, you should listen to Matt because it was oh. Dr. Pat. Oh, gross. Yo, it was not my like fault. The good news is that Dr. Pat had an orgasm in the gynecologist's office. <laughs> the bad news, however, Brian, buddy, Get back there and put on your penalty outfit because... I don't think that the world will ever see, uh, you know, a, an uglier <laughs> and more unattractive Playboy bunny than Brian was. Come on out of here, Brian. No. Oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> you look hungry to me. And you know what bunnies love to eat, don't you? Carrots. That's right, carrots. But what I want you to do, Matt, is I want you to step forward and I want you to feed this bunny a carrot, but I want you to hold it between your knees, okay? Oh! oh. Between my knees? No, yeah, right between your knees. I don't swallow. Chew, bunny rabbit. Chew like you've never chewed before. <laughs> all right, you're all done. You're all done. Sit down. You, you got carrot Woo! on your jacket right there. Well, congratulations, team. I got, I got carrot on me? Congratulations, team. Right this very moment, we are going to whisk you all away to one of the most luxurious and expensive day spas in California. I'm the type with a game, we had a lot of fun. I was happy for them. Honestly, Bye. have fun. Have fun. Oh, yeah. Really, really, yeah, have, have a good time. Have fun. Bye, guys. What's gonna happen now is you're gonna remain in these penalty outfits for the rest of the day while you're performing the following task. You are gonna be cleaning the mansion. We're gonna send you in there. How long do we have to do this? Till it's clean. Go, start right, cleaning. I'll, I'll fix this. So I'm off to get my first Manny Petty. I'm kind of excited actually. Next. Who did this? Matt is caught in the middle. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? And later, Ashley shows Matt a jaw dropping talent. Oh my gosh. Here, let me, I'll move this here. I just need some water to okay. wipe the counter off. As good as you're doing those, Matt, yeah. they won't even have to turn the dishwasher on. Here's Matt going, let's clean the house, dude. You know, they won fair and square. Let's do it right. This is the photo album. I've already taken out the sheets of paper with the pictures in them. Now, Kip has taken a lot of time to put a lot of care into this photo album. So what I'm going to do is replace his photos with my own shots, my personal shots. <clears throat> the Hutchins family photo album, which would probably involve, I'm thinking, a little bit of the buttocks. Do you know how to do it, Earl? Yeah. Do I know how to do it? Give me a break. Do you want it? Years in photojournalism class are really paying off. Do you want to have Earl short the sheets? No, dude, we should just be cool. They won. Fuck, there's Comet everywhere. I need, like, a towel. Can I get a towel? There's a paper towels. Okay, I'm gonna need a freaking ton of them. Mr. Matt said no pranks. I mean, we're about to, we're about to have, you know, a, a memento book full of hairy-ass pictures, courtesy of the Hutch, delivered to our sensitive Kip. And we set it back where we found it. I'm frankly a little scared of what's gonna happen tonight. Oh, thank After you. You. Oh, wow, look how clean it is in here. What's up? Oh my. Dude, that, Kip. that is, as you say, gay. That, this wasn't my idea. Kip, you are you realize you're a man, right? You do realize that. Beach your time! Lab of luxury! Thank you so much. Can you agree to Kip went to place the pictures from the spa into his book. Look. Can we get open? Awesome. Oh, that's sweet. Super sweet. Super. <sighs> So what you got, massage? Yeah, what happened? I had, well I have like, like cramps and tums, but I had my toes done and I had to massage my legs. Okay, who did this? 
Who did this? What? Remember all of his pictures? Certainly you don't think that I would have done that. Did you do this? No, it's not an arm and a leg and a mortar attack. It's photographs. That's all. It's photographs. Okay, it's photographs of somebody's ass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't see the joke in this. Where, Who did this? Where are they, you guys? Did you guys do this to me when I was gone? Thank you very much. I, I'm going to say right now, right now, I, this is the first I'm seeing of this. Well, you know what? I don't believe that. Because how did that happen without you guys knowing about it? I, no, no, what? Happen? Listen, calm down. I know. Just calm I'm down. telling you the honest truth. If you want to yell at them, I'm exempting myself from this I am because too. I had nothing. Didn't know about it, had nothing to do with it. I understand and you're upset. Did I. Kept, I but swear don't direct it at me. So tell me who did this right now so I can thank you personally. I want to thank you personally. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. I know who did it because there. someone, whoever took these pictures, implicated themselves. I'll pull your pants down right now and find out who did this. Relax. Tell me right dude. now. I did it. Relax. It's not a big fucking deal. Jesus, it was a joke. You need to go get those pictures. He's freaking out. It's just pictures. It's just a joke. Where are they? This was pictures? my comfort item. I brought it here to make everyone happy. And this is what you do to me? I... Way to go, dick. We were worried that Matt might just haul off and knock the crap out of the hutch. Because by this point, you know, he, he had pretty much had enough. Why would you do that? It's funny. It's not funny. No. Where are my pictures? Where are they? Where are my pictures that I took? Get his pictures, dude. Just They're gone. Get... I ruined them. What? I cut them up. That was our memories. Well, what do you mean you cut them up, I dude? I cut them up, dude. I thought it'd be funny. I purposely sat away from Matt. And, you know, once I said I cut up the pictures, I just hung back by the chair. I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd freak out like this. You know, what cares? the fuck are you talking about, dude? There's a couple Polaroids. Hey, hey, dude, you know what? You better just, I don't want to get, make this any more than it is, but if you really cut them up, like, you honestly have to take a look at yourself. You are a very bad person. It's a fucking joke. Re you need to relax, cowboy hat, dude. Okay, Dr. Bad, Dr. Bad, I gotta talk to you right now. I Those pictures right are gonna now. be worth something someday, dude. I need, relax. I need some professional people to talk to me about this because nobody's helping me. Nobody is helping me. You're a fucking asshole. You're, you're a fucking anyone. asshole, dude. What? If this you ruin the pictures, you're a fucking asshole. Touching his book, like, I'm not trying to gang up on you, man, but this is the kind of shit I've been trying to tell you about. You implicated yourself. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna pull your pants down right now. Pull your pants out. Pull your pants out. Matt's out there going like, Hutch, why would you do that? That's wrong. Dude, Dude you know how sensitive he is. His pictures are fine, all right? His pictures are fine. Then why don't you go tell him that? Because he's the one that's freaking out and stupid. He's freaking out because he's them. sensitive. You go stupid. and get them now. You better win that fucking immunity tomorrow, dude. Cause I'm voting you the fuck out. <laughs> Better get a good night's sleep, dude. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry. That makes I'm it sorry. easy on me. Makes it easy on me. Five fucking letters. You are gone. Next, Dr. Pat gets inside Matt's head. Can you give it some rhythm? <sighs> I don't okay. mind. It got out of hand. It. That's it Fine. It was like a snowball, dude. How many times are you going to say you're sorry in three fucking days? That's what I don't yeah. understand. Well, guys, I, I'm, guys, guys, this is going against what she just did for okay, me. Okay. So let's just dissipate, like you said to me, yeah. dissipate. Come here. Come here, let me show you this. This it is how big of a man I am. You talk to this everybody. is how big of a man I am. Kip was saying very nice things about me, like I was a genius, and Brian's like, maybe we should all see Dr. Pat, and Matt, thank the Lord, was like, oh, I'll go, I'll go next. I felt like going good, you're supposed to. <laughs> you're next. I swore, on, I read. Well, I just want to tell you that whatever is in your chest right now does not have to be there, and it's there because you haven't told it to leave. It sounds so like corny, but it, I mean, I'm amazed. A lot of times in yoga, people imagine their breath to be white. So if you can imagine when you breathe in, it's white and it's literally killing the red inside your body. And when you exhale, it's leaving your body. It takes as long as you need. I really wanted him to make noise, like make a sound. I don't know, I just thought it'd be funny. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Another thing, you can give it a sound when you exhale. <sighs> there you go, there you go. You can give it some rhythm. 
<laughs> Dr. Pat assured me that things were gonna be all right. You have to trust what life is gonna give you. I sense that you're very worried about your future and about how your parents are thinking of your life right now. Yeah. I don't remember specifically telling her all that and what she said really hit home because that's true. It's not that I am, that's part of what I'm worried about. Yeah. And for the sake of this exercise, you're not doing it wrong if you still feel that red inside you. Sometimes it'll take a little while. And when you're alone, you can literally, I know it sounds silly, but you can just tell it to leave. <sighs> I don't need you anymore, leave. I know it sounds ridiculous, but. No, it doesn't. The weird thing is, is like, maybe I'm crazy, but like, I kind of think I helped him a little bit. <laughs> I really do. You feel a little better? Yeah, I feel a little better. You do? I feel a little like. You feel, that's yeah. what happens. <laughs> when we were through, I felt like lightheaded and a bit euphoric. Uh, truly, I truly felt like that. And it was, it felt great. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome, baby. <laughs> You're a good person. I. I am a believer in Dr. Pat now, yes. Thanks, you too. You're a good doctor. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else wants to come in here, but you can just tell them to come in. I know that Hutch felt bad. I know that he was just playing a joke and didn't expect it to go so far. I'd like to again apologize. The Hutch is sorry. Uh, you know, again, it was a joke. Regardless of voting and whatnot, I just want to say I'm sorry, person to person, everyone here. Ralph came in to dinner and wanted to get that ball rolling by having us go around the table and show off some of our oddities. We understand that Dr. Pat does an excellent impression of Jabba the Hutt from the Star Wars what? movies. What? what? This is something we found out about Dr. Pat that you may not oh. know. <laughs> oh, crazy. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for. You have my one? My mother is going to freak out when she's in there. No, I hate that. Oh, my Rude! God. Oh! oh my God. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I can touch my impressive. tongue to my nose. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Ah. That'll get you a date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody look. Nothing up my sleeve. No chin. No chin. Three chins. No chin. <laughs> Three chins. Huh? Yeah. That's a deformity. No, I have uh, no little knuckle. That's all. I just, I have no, no knuckle. Oh, my goodness. That's a deformity. He has oh, a wait, knuckle. Are you out here? There's you lose no in the war, dude? No, in a bar fight. You should see the other guy. I have a double jointed jaw. Yes. What does that mean? It means that I can stick my fist in my mouth. Get your camera. I have to clap for that. When I put my fist in my mouth, Matt had a pretty big reaction, and it was not intended to really cause that much of a ruckus, but um, boys will be boys, and um, everyone has to have their skills, I guess. <laughs> then I can uh, have an impression of a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to like, get electrocuted. That's awesome. That's pretty good, right? That's real good. Ralph came in prior to his leaving and uh, Kosh wanted to give us a gift. I just want you guys to know, I know you're not like getting a lot of feedback because you're stuck here in the house, and just the thing today, we did the, the game show thing, mm -hmm. and the underwear stuff that you guys did, it's all great, and you guys, I think America's gonna love you guys when this thing goes on television, and I just wanted Thanks to give you a telling us. Thanks. Thanks. My character is such an arrogant, egocentric idiot that he's gonna give everybody a little present to make them feel like family. And this is my first, like, Big TV gig, and I'm happy to be working with all of you because it's. I think it's really coming together nice. I was about to say, hey Ralph, what'd you do? Bring us a bunch of headshots. But I got one of these for each of you, and I want you to have them. That's for oh, you, no. buddy. Oh, That's you, Hutch. 
I don't know if anyone else found that weird, <laughs> but I did. Ashley, it's yours. We had a setup that Ashley is starting to develop this crush on the host, and the host is developing a huge crush on Molly. Molly, it's yours. That's an attractive photo. Yeah, I Brian. Oh, I got a book. Oh. I got to work a little bit of, of the, the Molly Ashley, me, love triangle in there, too. Yeah, just my little way of telling you guys that, uh, you know, I'm thinking about you, so you just know that, all right? Thanks, Thanks Ralph. Man. You guys be good. Bye. Oh. It was great. And he's not getting votes. Molly, you're as beautiful as you are sweet. William is the luckiest guy in the world. All my love, Ralph. All my love. Wow. <laughs> wow. I think that Ashley might be a little bit jealous of Molly. What did he say for you? Um, Ashley best wishes, Ralph. Um. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's picture I wrote, Ashley, spelled incorrectly. Best wishes, Ralph Garman. I did my impression of the girl that everybody can't stand that sits at a table in a group of people that keeps saying nothing's wrong when obviously there's something wrong and kind of destroys the entire dinner because, you know, she's pouting over in the corner. What's wrong? Nothing. You've been upset. I'm full. I am. They didn't serve you your champagne, did they? Oh, I could use one. Oh, it was a nice dinner. Table? That was good, yeah, did yeah. Work when good. I was in there or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, Matt, once again, being the best guy that he is, after the dinner came up and just said, I know, gave me a hug and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> Brian forced <laughs> and urged everyone st very strongly <laughs> to go in the jacuzzi. I got up there a little early with two of the girls. Those girls are so frisky. I just love that we could like, like sit on your lap. I know. You guys just, like oh. totally. It wouldn't be a big deal. I know. It wouldn't be a big deal. It would not be a big deal. You've got two on your lap. We don't have to worry about you doing anything. I know. It's like I'm a big huggable teddy bear. You are just a teddy bear. Oh. He's such a teddy bear. Wow. That's right. It's the big gay teddy bear. Thank you guys. There are two girls on Kip's lap in the jacuzzi right now. If you feel something, that's the chlorine automator. <laughs> and it checks the chlorine levels. <laughs> Needless to say, I, uh, I wasn't really able to stand up out of the jacuzzi for a while. Well, our first hot tub session. What's up? Uh, this was all set up for Kiss the Ugly Frog. It was a game that Dr. Pat was going to bring up. A game where someone sits in the middle and everyone goes around and says something nice about them. I'm going to start and say that you are, like I said before, a genius. I think that what you did to me and our interaction together, I will use that for the rest of my life. It's so interesting to me that you are as stable as you are. Obviously, this is your second career, your third marriage. I think you told me before you were barren. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank you. I'd be a little... No, uh, dude, you uh, crack my shit up. Thanks. Bottom line. Next. I, I can't explain what it is. I mean, it, we just... I also admire that you are okay with working security and you're okay with having your career where it's at. Thank you. Your innocence is nice to see in a day and age when that is few and far between. I'm gonna say you have beautiful breasts. No. <laughs> ah, you do. I'm saying this because I know no one else wants to be rude, but they are beautiful and I admire them. I think that it's amazing how you don't come on to other guys or do anything to influence other guys when you have a boyfriend back home. Oh my. Yes. I uh, have to say that in our short time together, Sometimes you look at me with such soft eyes that it kind of just makes me wilt a little inside. So, thanks. <laughs> Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Pearl! You are, much to your chagrin, Earl the Pearl. A hard shell on the outside and a beautiful, beautiful stone within. I'm really glad that we met and I'm 
can honestly say that I'm better off for having known you. Thanks. Earl, when I look at you, I see the wrinkles. You remind me of my grandpa. I don't know if that's a thank you or not. It's a thank, just <laughs> thank a <thing>. you. <laughs> when I seen you, what I seen was another flash in the pan, gay blade. You're a sensitive human being. I admire you for the courage that you have and uh, the sincere man that you are. You make me feel comfortable in, you know, showing my sensitive side. I've always wanted a gay friend, to be honest. <laughs> and I'm glad I have one. Oh, wow. Matt's turn. Well, dude, I think that America will agree with me and what everyone said here that you know they're gonna say dude you're a good guy and I think you're a good guy and I think everyone will think that thank you you're welcome I don't think you have any idea how you present yourself it's amazing I think we're all blown away by 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 who you are thank you very much when I uh, first seen you met you and listened to you I just thought, what a suck ass. <laughs> this dude will kiss everybody's ass to win this hundred grand. And then I stayed with you one night or two nights, whatever the hell it was. And that's who you are. You're just a sincere human being. I can't top that, you know. But I can honestly say, like, you're my best friend here. And I hope you guys all know I love all you guys too. But, so thanks. I'm stoked that we made it, man. I was happy to see you. I think that you're a very special person. I think that there is something special. I don't know what. I mean, I just think that there's something special. Thank you. I think Ashley's been nothing but nice and sweet to me. Kiss the Ugly Frog was the perfect ending to one of the best days of my life. One, two, three. Oh! And next time, one of the worst days of Matt's life. I should have thought about all of this before I came. The show is in jeopardy. You gotta fucking stop this. Next time on The Joe Schmo Show.